Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are taking a very small look at our Jovian lander, uh, which we're not going to name um, for this very reason. Um, I, I don't know what happened here. We checked that course. I remember correcting it, getting it ready for its intercept uh, at Jupiter. And uh, I've seen this glitch before. It has happened to me before. This is what... This is why the Venus Return Project, the first one, went to Mars and uh, and and not Venus. So this is obviously not going to make it all the way out here to Jupiter. There's, I don't know, not enough delta V in this thing really. We could try to make a correction here or here in a couple of years to uh, put it back out on a course to hit Jupiter, but it's certainly not going to have any kind of fuel to uh, obtain orbit or perform a landing anywhere, which is really sad and <laughs> makes me uh, a little angry. Uh, I am going to try to get some kind of usable data off of this mission, however, because I think uh, we we still have uh, crossings with Mars orbit, with uh, Earth's orbit. If we just wanted to bring it home, we could make a small correction, maybe get it down to Venus. So I'm going to play around with some nodes and see what I can't just figure out as far as uh, what to do with this spacecraft. All right, well, that's not too bad. That uh, that does give us an encounter with Mars pretty easily, uh, you know, a couple of years <laughs> from now. But uh, I think it, it'll be worth shooting for. Uh, it's a non-atmospheric lander, so we could try to put it down on one or maybe even both of uh, Mars's rocky moons. Um, oh, boy, I can't remember which one we landed on now. Proby McProbe face out here. Yes did a flyby of Phobos and landed on Deimos. So maybe we can try to land it on Phobos. Uh, worthwhile repurposing of uh, this mission. So uh, I hate to do this to you, but if you can suggest a new name for our Jovian lander that is now bound for Mars so that we can save that really cool name for a mission that will probably be a carbon copy of this one to go to Jupiter next year, next uh, Jupiter window, we can do that. So anyway, uh, I'm going to take a quick save. I am going to set up uh, the Kerbal alarm clock. Whenever that decides to be a thing, there we go. Add alarm, maneuver node, 313 days. So we got some time and I have some other business to attend to. All right, and well, while we've got about 55 days or so before we need to uh, start paying attention to some of our um, our other things out in deep space. Oh uh, yeah, Wander needs to make a plane change correction out at Saturn, put him on course to do his flybys of Saturn's moons. We still need to figure out the uh, comms situation there. So I figured while we've got 55 days, we might as well do some experiments here with our rover to see if a life support pod on the rover itself can uh, support a crew member sitting in a seat. And this is kind of a crucial experiment for our Mars rover program. So we will be doing that as soon as we've got our next batch of data transmitted in. We had 498.3 uh, science stowed away in our lab. We're going to go ahead and transmit that home. We've gotten the data down to 70, uh, or 608, sorry, dot 581 out of a total of 750. So we're going to move some other of these uh, stowed experiments that we have into the laboratory. That's good. 498 science added. I like it. <clears throat> So uh, let's just do a quick review data. Uh, that's 40 mits. Man, that's going to generate 1,100 science all on its own. That is awesome. And yeah, cannot 
analyze and like, wait, what we should have well more we should have like 142 science left uh okay i hope it kept that and uh, this is 160 mit so we'll i guess we'll keep that if 40 won't fit then how will any of this other stuff review store data what do we got here oh yeah that's 20,000 for some pictures <laughs> that we took Man, uh, I guess we're just going to keep that and then uh, bring that home uh, in the lander. guess that's all we've got currently. So um, if the life support drain off from TAC life support has stopped, it has. Excellent. Um, yeah, let's hit clean experiments. Cleaning out biological sample. That's, that's good. I did not realize there was a delay on that, but... I don't know, makes sense, I guess. Okay. All right, that's complete. How's our electric charge looking? Uh, not great. We have a drain. I guess, yeah, we got two solar panels. Well, that one's doing something. This one is doing something. That one's doing something. We've got all our RTGs out here. Cranking out power, I assume. Yep. They are, uh, they're totally running. <laughs> like, yeah, we are benefiting from these solar panels as well. I guess what we should be doing is, uh, sh nope, that one's already active. I guess I, these are not. Yeah, shut down avionics. That'll take care of some of this drain. We totally don't need it. All right, shut down avionics. Perfect. And what about you over here? Shut down avionics. He has another core on the bottom that we cannot shut down. How'd that affect things? Yeah, much, much less of a drain. All right, anyway, it is time to get our engineer out and uh, see what we can't do about this rover thing. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to take a quick save. Do not EVA anyone while TAC life support is... Uh, compensating for the drain in life support during time when the vessel was not rendered it will kill people instantly there's boris he chose to come out this door okay that was that was nice do you where is your inventory excellent equip do not remove your helmet sir that would be a terrible terrible idea And now that we've got Boris down the ladder, we're going to switch to some sped-up footage because uh, otherwise this episode would be entirely too long. So, it is uh, well enough time for me to actually learn how to use this uh, Kerbal Inventory, Kerbal Attachment system thing, and uh, admittedly, I struggled with it a lot. The objective here is to uh, take some of these scientific experiments uh, off the base itself, have Boris install them on the rover, uh, Preferably not an engine bell, but I'm having trouble moving that one at all, let alone placing it anywhere or getting it to uh, pop up with the little icon to put it in inventory. Uh, this struggle will take me a while, and I realize that some of you are screaming at the screen at this point about uh, how to do this uh, a lot better or more efficiently, etc., etc. But uh, I deferred from reading the actual manual and tried to just figure it out like I've done with so many other things, it did not work. Um, in a couple of minutes here, I actually uh, deferred out to the manual uh, through the interwebs. Uh, I have just edited all of that out. So there was a long pause here where I was not doing anything to which I then read stuff and figured out how to do it. So uh, much against my own nature, I did defer to the manual itself. You'll be happy to know. So I did eventually get these uh, three small instruments off the top here. Uh, I think I ended up throwing one of them uh, off the edge of things, which wasn't very fun. And well, it's just gone now. So unfortunately, that's just how it is, I guess. Yeah. And that was uh, certainly an interesting noise. Uh, even having read the manual, it wasn't fully cooperating uh, most of the time here. You can see that detach uh, icon is grayed out where really it shouldn't be. But uh, I guess I was just uh, holding the wrong button. So 
eventually we will have uh, these four uh, instruments plus the goo pod uh, in Boris's inventory, and now we will install them on the side of the rover itself. I mean, hopefully. Uh, this took a, a little bit more of me trying to figure stuff out. But uh, it will come together. I, I promise you this. There it is. Now we've got kind of a metric figured out here. It's just, yep, where did that one go? It's gone. No clue. I was half expecting it to explode because everything else a Kerbal drops from his hand, much like Master Shake, tends to explode on impact ground for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So we'll get this uh, goo container mounted somewhere up top. I know there's a button to press to make things snap to node. Uh, I just couldn't be bothered. And then we will have Boris hop in the driver's seat. I guess we should close our inventory and then board. We now have control of the rover, and the second experiment we want to run here is to see if Boris's spacesuit will share resources with the onboard life support container on this rover pod. Uh, so far, it does look like it is draining, but now we need to find another biome. And this means uh, bringing up the uh, rover automated guidance thing in MechJeb. Because when you try to set waypoints, it will actually tell you what biome they are in. So the minute we can find any other biome that is not the lowlands, namely here the midlands, uh, we're going to start plotting a course. Although I think there we can get a little closer than that. There we go. Bingo. We got 20-some-odd uh, kilometers to drive, which is really just a nice, uh, a nice Sunday drive. So we'll keep the uh, arrow the indicator pulled up here, although I am driving this manually, as you can tell by the overcompensation on the steering and the uh, general not so goodiness of the uh, the piloting here. But uh, we can defer to MechJeb for speed control, which we can still retain, retain steering uh, controls ourselves. And yeah, that's just a good shot. I had to get that one more for posterity's sake than anything else. But uh, he does look excited to be taking this uh, rover out for its actual intended purposes. We did fire up the RCS just for a couple of seconds there, just to make sure the system was working. Uh, should this rover get uh, uncomfortably airborne, we can use that to help keep it uh, wheel side down. Uh, in the event of a catastrophic roll, I'm hoping that it will have uh, enough force behind it to at least roll it a little bit of the way. It does not have the... Uh, tractable wheels that uh, I have used on many other rovers in other planets for which to ride itself. A system we're kind of lacking here, so maybe this will work, maybe it won't, who knows. Anyway, we've uh, we've got quite a drive ahead of us, but it's pretty easy. We can kind of just uh, plot ourselves in a, a straight line and go, but uh, really the longer he is out here, the more clear of an indication we'll have if he is actually going to be able to share life support with that internal system which is a, a big test that will uh, tell us if this uh, Mars rover that we have plotted out is actually a viable idea. Uh, kind of a, a lot writing on that. Maybe I should have done this test first. Maybe not. Anyway, I'm sure Boris has some uh, jamming road trip tunes playing through his headphones right now. Uh, at some point, we will actually... Uh, crank down the speed a little bit because I'm a little worried about some of these hills I, and getting airborne over those has been the number one cause of uh, lost rovers but never miss an opportunity to get a good uh, couple of scene sh uh, screenshots that one there with the earth in the background that's certainly a winner and uh, also just the driving footage this could make for some something good provided I ever get around to actually doing anything but as you can see from that over the hill shot, we've got to clear this hill. We're going to go down the other side and then up the next hill. And uh, then our waypoint is just a little beyond that. And for brevity's sake, we'll be uh, ramping up some of our accelerated footage as there was uh, really just not a whole lot going on here. A lot of gray. Uh, the rover performed really well. We didn't really put it through anything strenuous, no hard turns or hard braking, because, uh, well, if we leave poor Boris stranded out here, I'm not sure how long it would take him to walk 23 kilometers 
in his spacesuit, but it might be more well than the 23 hours of life support he has. And even if it's not, I'd, I would really rather just not do that at all. So as we approach our target at the top of the hill, we actually get there just a, a little sooner than expected. We use Mech Jeb to slow ourselves down to an easy stop and then continue with the mission. And well, we made it. Uh, 1.8 kilometers shy of where that uh, node uh, waypoint was placed. So we can go ahead and start collecting our data. Keep experiment. All this stuff is from the Midlands, which we have been to before. So we probably won't get any uh, useful information here as far as stuff to bring home. But it's all good stuff for the lab. Keep experiment. Thank you very much. And we got these two over here to run. Log reds. Keep experiment. Uh, oh, log temperature, keep experiment, and uh, of course we can uh, take an EVA report, we'll keep that, um, now he's going to have to get out to do a surface sample, uh, leave seat, alright Boris, uh, yeah, you know, right over here. Uh, EVA report. Yeah, we'll overwrite it. Moons Midlands keep. Take surface sample. Keep. Perfect. I'm bad for a day's work, I'd have to say. Look at that little guy. He is super happy to be here. So, I'm going to drive him home uh, all on my own. I won't make you sit through that drive uh, twice. But uh, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I really do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.